How's it going everyone? In the last video, I showed you guys how to create a surface and use feature lines to edit the surface. And I also dove into grading groups to understand how to grade a portion of a site. In that last example, we were walking through a pond and what we did was we set two feature lines of this pond at specific elevations and then we applied a grading group to the outer edge to see where we were grading. And again, you kind of learned a little bit about feature lines. You learned about the elevation editor. You learned about grading groups. What I want to do in this video is kind of just build off the same concept and just kind of go through a workflow of, of how I would approach this grading exercise with the lots in the pond. So the first thing that I'm actually going to do we need to start creating feature lines. So I'm actually going to go up here and do create feature lines from objects. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make all of these feature lines here. Now typically a dialog box pops up and if you learned from the last video, uh, you learned a little bit about sites. So I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and press okay here to speed up our time. So you know you've created feature lines if they either start changing colors or if you select them, they actually show a feature line ribbon tool. I'm going to automatically apply these to our surface. So I wanna add these feature lines into the surface because when I start editing, I want you guys to watch and see how it morphs in real time. So I'm gonna go over here to surfaces. And again, this is our FG where we've defined this final grade surface into our different break lines from the last video. So if you haven't seen that last video, I would definitely go check it out. I'm gonna go ahead and just start selecting all of these lines that we want to add as the break lines. I can't forget about this, this swale line here. I'm gonna go ahead and add those all as break lines. All of these are going to have elevation zero at the very start. So you're gonna see the surface go way down to the depths. I'm just going to call these break lines, let's just say there are lots. These are residential lots. All right, so I can already tell the surface is starting to talk to each other here. Now you can tell it's very, very steep right here. And again, I already, I already knew that this was going to happen because we applied these feature lines to the surface and all of these are pretty much at elevation zero. What I'm going to do here, if you don't know about these, you can do that, you can do an annotation label. You can go to surface, you can do a slope label it's gonna ask you select a surface or press enter, t enter key to select from list. I'm just gonna press the enter key. You get this dialog to pop up and I really wanna know the slope of the surface right here. So I'm gonna go press FG. That's where I'm interested in. Now this create slope label is gonna ask me for one point or two points. In this case, I'm only gonna just use one point right there. So let me go ahead and zoom in. So obviously, <laughs> This is a really steep slope. This is a slope of 290%. And that's because we gotta start applying some elevations to these guys. I'm gonna show you how I would quickly walk through some of the grading of this site. So this is a lot line right here. And what I'm going to do is I already know the elevation that I want at this point. So this pond top of bank, I believe we set this to elevation 48. But if you're unsure, we can actually go check this here by selecting the feature line and going up to the elevation editor. So this dialog box will pop up and we do in fact have 48. So I want the lots to slope from the lot to the pond. So what I can do is just set this elevation to a higher elevation than 48. Now, the main tool that I like to use for grading is I really love this quick elevation edit tool. When you click it, when you hover over these points, it'll ask you if you wanna either just set an elevation of that point, or if you grab somewhere in between two points, it'll ask you if you wanna grade a slope. In this case, I have an idea of what I wanna set this lot to. I really wanna set it at about 49 feet in elevation. 
The reason being is because, again, I want about a foot drop from this back of lot to the top of bank. Notice how our slope is actually starting to check out a bit better here. The typical max slope that I am usually dealing with is 4 to 1, which is also 25%. Uh, 5 to 1 would be 20%. 3 to 1 would be 33%. Now the max slope, again, that I usually use is 4 to 1. So that checks out. Now what I want to start doing is just start setting some of these grades. So I'm going to set this to 49. I'm going to set this guy to 49. And then voila. I mean, we're cooking with fire here. And it's as simple as using the quick elevation edit tool to start setting some of these points. Now this is the slow way for setting all of these points here. But I just wanted to show you the tools that we have. I really like using this tool to actually grade swales and different slopes. So let me actually show you that really quick. Let's say if I wanted these lots to grade at 5%, what I would do is instead of calculating this all out, I could easily go to my flow arrow here. And you notice, keep, keep in mind, if I start floating down like this, notice that, da uh, notice that arrow, it wants to start flowing down. But if I hover above, it starts flowing up. So let's say if I wanted to float above or to a point, I'm going to click a little bit above it. And it's going to say, it's going to ask, specify grade or slope. In this case, I'm going to specify a grade of 25. So do you see how it did 25%? So whenever you use grade, it will be going at the percentage. So I entered 25 and now it's sloping down 25%. That's pretty steep for a yard, you know, right in between the yards. I, I think, you know, if I were to put a swale in here, I would probably want to be anywhere between half a percent to maybe, maybe 2%. So in this case, I'm going to hover back over and I, it looks like I already did. So I already have it selected and I, I want to respecify this grade. So I actually want to go with just two for 2%. Now it looks like that updated. And again, what I love about this is that if you know what you're doing in this program, you don't have to calculate very much. I think it's always good to hand calculate, but CAD is doing the work for you. It's a very powerful tool. All right, so instead of laying out all of the grades by the quick elevation tool, we're gonna go dive into some other tools in here. So we got the quick elevation edit, which we just used. We have edit elevation. So this edits the vertex elevations of this line. So let's go ahead and click it and let's just see what we're working with. So edit elevations, it looks like we can enter in a grade, a slope, surface, or insert. So let's experiment here. Let's do insert. Now we're gonna specify a point. So now it's asking if we want to specify a point along here. So let's say if you had a midpoint kind of drawn out, what we can do is just add another ele elevation in between. Which definitely comes in handy if you want to start breaking up this lot to have water flow opposite ways in here. Looks like we have set grade slope between points. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. You can also do that with the quick elevation edit tool. Here's one that I really want to show you. So this one is called elevations from surface. Now I'm actually going to go over here to the wetland. So this wetland line is existing in the real world. So it's associated to an existing elevation. What I wanna do is I actually just wanna take its buffer line and I wanna set it to the existing grade of the surface. Now look at how many points are on here. It would take a million years to compile uh, this data to manually input each elevation. Luckily, we have a tool. But the first thing we have to do is create a feature line. So let's again reiterate how to create a feature line. You can go up to that home tab, gonna select this line, gonna press enter, and everything's gonna be on that site. Now, I want to reference elevations from this feature line. And in order to do that, I can go right to this home tab and you have this icon here called Elevations from Surface. I'm going to go ahead and click. So it asks me what surface I want to set elevations to. Well, obviously, like I said, this is an existing wetland. So I want to use the EG for existing grade. 
these are pretty standard default. I like to just leave those there and I'm gonna press okay. So now it's gonna ask me to select the object and I'm gonna select that feature line and voila. We now have a feature line that is pulling straight from our existing surface. This gives us a lot of power if we are trying to tie in at a certain grade. And let me kind of show you that. So now since I have this feature line, I'm gonna add it in as a break line to our FG. That way I know exactly where I need to cut off the boundary of our mark. So again, we're gonna have residential lots, we're gonna have ponds. We really wanna tie in before this wetland buffer. We don't wanna impact this wetland at all. So now that I've added that to the surface, and this is exactly what I expected. We have a whole bunch of triangulating going on in here. Let me show you a quick way of how to clean up your surface. And this is really, really important. So one way to clean up your surface is you're going to have to put your FG onto a triangles and points style. So luckily I've already cre created a surface style called triangles and points. If you don't know how to do that, check out my last video. So here I have triangles and points. AutoCAD is doing is it's trying to all talk together and I haven't even finished out my grading for the site. So it's starting to all triangulate and talk to each other and it's getting pretty sloppy. I'm gonna show you really quickly how to clean up the surface. So again, you have to have triangles and points, select your surface and go up here to your 10 surface home tab, edit surface, and we are going to start deleting out some lines in here. I really want to delete any of the lines that are kind of outside of here. Uh, again, this is an existing wetland buffer line. All of the EG should be talking within the wetland, not exactly outside. And again, just for presentation, I'm going to hover over these lines, press enter, and voila, they're all removed. Again, you want to do this because right now this is just a false surface. I haven't really finished my grading yet. Uh, and it's kind of just, you know, throwing me off visually. And again, I just wanted to show you this because there will be many times when you have oddities in your surface and you're wondering why the heck is it set at this elevation? Well, this is exactly why. When you have all different points trying to triangulate and talk together, it's gonna start forming a surface in between. Last but not least, there's also the elevation editor tool. You can go to here and quickly edit the elevations of this feature line. So again, I was using 49. And now all of those points represent 40. Now all of those points represent 49. That's all I have for this video. I just wanted to show you a little bit more feature line tools and show you how I would roughly grade this portion of work. Hope you guys learned something new. Feel free to like and subscribe to my channel for more civil engineering tips. Also, feel free to comment below if you would like to learn anything more or if you have any questions related to this video. Thanks and have a good night.